praise the Lord. Come on, if you're outside. It's time for church this morning. Amen. Come on, y'all. Put your hands together with us. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you are the answer, Lord, to everything. Lord, that we can come to you boldly. The Bible says boldly into the th throne of grace. And Lord, right now, we just come to you and we ask you, Lord, to just bless this service in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we invite you to this place. We ask you to come right now. Fill this house, Lord God, with your power and your presence today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone who agreed, said. Amen and amen. Turn them out two or three people. Give them a fist bump this morning. Tell me glad to see them in church this morning. Amen.
he's always there. Amen. And that's what he desires, a closer walk with each and every one of us. Sing that last verse. Well, when my feeble life is old. Father, we thank you for today. Lord, we just desire that closer walk with you, Lord. And right now, Lord, we just thank you for that your that healing river, Lord God, that, he, that river of anointing is flowing into this place right now. Because we've come today expecting. And Lord, we desire more of you in our lives. We desire more of you in this place, oh God, in our hearts. Lord, we want more of you to surround us. Engulf us, oh God. Oh, Lord, let us just be consumed by your presence. Holy Spirit, we just pray. Just come right now. We invite you. Lord, come right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Church, if you want to come down to the altar and worship, just feel free this morning. Just come on. Let the poor man say, I am rich in him. Let the lost man say, I am found in him. Let the river flow. Let the blind man, let the blind man say, I can see again. Let the dead man say, I am born again.
Jesus, Lord, let your river flow in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace today. Thank you, Lord God, for your mercy and your grace in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Good to me, 
His word my hope secures. Thank you, Lord. He will my shield and portion me as long as life endures. Come on, sing it now. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Thank you, Lord. Unending love, amazing grace. Come on, sing it again. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior, for oh, you ransom me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. Sing it one more time. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, honey, amazing grace, honey. Amazing grace, one more time. Unending love, amazing grace. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace. Thank you, Lord, for your grace in our lives. Thank you, Lord God, for your mercy in our lives. And Lord, your word says that your mercies are renewed every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for your grace today. Oh, we exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We exalt you, Lord. For you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Lord, we give you our lives today. Hallelujah. We exalt you, oh God. The splendor of the King robed in majesty and all the earth rejoice. All the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our Church, 
Jesus, come on, sing it. It's the name. There you go. Come on, sing it loud. Jesus' name. Just lift your hands toward heaven right now. 
church. If you need a miracle today, lift your hands toward heaven and say, Lord, I receive my miracle. Come on, tell him. Use your mouth. Use your mouth. Confess it today. Say it with your mouth. Don't just think it. Say it. Say, Lord, I receive my miracle. Lord, I receive my miracle. Say it again. I receive my miracle in the name of Jesus. Say that with me. Say, in the name of Jesus, I receive my miracle. Come on. Somebody's not getting excited in here. Come on, say it again. In the name of Jesus, I receive my miracle. I believe it because that's the word of what the Bible says. Come on, say that with me. Say, because that's what the Bible says. I believe it. I'm going to receive it right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give me praise. Come on, give him praise, church. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just keep playing that softly. Keep playing that softly. Come back. Come back with it. Great is our God. Oh, sing with me how great. Is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. All right, hang on just a minute, guys. Hang on just a second. How great, just the voices. How great is our God? Oh, sing with me. How great is our God? And oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Hallelujah. 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 One more time. How great is our God. Oh, sing with me how great is our God. And oh, sing how great, how great is our God. Oh, God, you are great. You are a great God. We worship you, Lord. Have your way in us today, Lord. Speak to us today, Lord. Lord, we want to hear your voice. Speak to us, O oh God. We worship you. We exalt you. We come humbly before you. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is the name of Oh, 
say amen. amen. Come on, give me praise today, church. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout glory. Amen. Amen. You may be seated if you can. Amen. Do you believe we serve a great God? You better because he's the most, he's the greatest thing in the universe. He's the most awesome thing in the universe and all of creation, for he is the creator. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad we have the creator of all the heavens and all the earth as our heavenly father? Amen. Amen. And he loves us so much. He wants the very best for us. He chose us. He knew us before we were even informed in our mother's womb. He's got a plan for each and every one of us. Look at your neighbor and say, he's got a plan for you. Tell them, say, it's an awesome one. Amen. Tell them, say, hey, it's a, it's a really, really, come on, say this with me. Say, it's a really, look at them really good in the face. Say, it's a really, really, really awesome plan. Amen. Amen. And y'all believe that today? Come on, let's give the Lord another round of applause this morning. Amen. Amen. I'm going to let Miss Christine, our administrator, make give a few announcements for us this morning. Amen. All right. So um, our scripture reading this morning comes to you from 1 John 4, 16. It says, And have we known and believed the love that God has for us? God is love, and he abides in love, and abides in God, and God in him. So praise God for that scripture reading this morning. We are so excited to have you in the house of God today with us, worshiping with us. If this is your first time, we've got visitor cards that are in the back foyer. I don't want to call you out, make you stand up, raise your hand and all that. We're just going to keep it keep it kind of down low, but um, if you want to fill out a visitor card so that way we have your name and number and we can get in contact with you, we would greatly appreciate that. So the visitor cards are in the back and you can fill that in um, and drop in the offering bucket that's outside. Um, also, today is Baptism Sunday. I am so excited. I've been texting every people, everybody last night. Woo! And Debbie brought the crowd. Let me tell you what. So one of the ladies that's getting baptized today, she brought a whole crowd with her. We are so, so, so excited to have them with us. Yeah to have them with us. So anyway, we are looking forward to that. So if you're getting baptized today, see me right after church so I can line everybody up. I text like about five people yesterday and I'm not sure who's in, who's out, and what we're doing. So you'll see me right after church before you change into your clothes. That would, I would appreciate that so that way I can get everyone lined up for that. Um, also next Sunday is Chuck Wagon Breakfast. So mothers, it's Mother's Day and it is Chuck Wagon Breakfast and we're looking forward to that as well. So next Sunday, um, starting at, I believe, 9 o'clock um, in the foyer area as well. Um, we've got Bible study coming up on Wednesday nights at 6.30. Um, we also have a women's meeting coming up on May 8th. That is this Saturday. Uh, so May 8th. So if you are planning on attending and you have children, please let us know. If you do not let us know that you are bringing children, we will not have child care. And it will be wonderful. We'll be jumping for joy, I guess. I don't know. Last time I was like, oh no, we got some kids, and I'm on the phone with the nursery workers. Please get over here right away, because I didn't want to keep them. I don't mean to be ugly, but I didn't want to be in the nursery with those children, those wonderful children of yours. But if you're coming, like I said, you're coming on Saturday morning at 930, ladies, and you need child care, let Lacey Richards know. She's standing up over here. Let Lacey know. Also, you'll want to RSVP to Lacey as well. Tell her what you're bringing. Um, we are looking forward to that event. Um, also, the men's meeting will be May 22nd. And I, hey, somebody just told me today, you know, May 22nd is going to be my birthday. I was like, it was faith. I said, so men, on May 22nd, make sure you celebrate Faith's birthday with some big donuts or something. Who knows what y'all are going to have. But uh, we are looking forward to that. Um, also, during the week, like I've said before, if you have time, um, 
6.30 on Wednesday nights, we were re really getting in God's Word. We started talking about um, speaking in tongues this past week. And it was just an awesome time. I think we have like 15 maybe in the, I'm not sure. But it's it's more of a get to know each other and get in the Word of God and spend time with each other and learn more about um, the Scripture. So you'll want to join us at 6.30. We also have, have uh, children's things at 6.30 as well. Um, and I believe that is it for now. So children, it is your time to go to Children's Church. So if you're 12 and younger, you can go ahead and you're dismissed. Meet your teacher at the back. We are so excited. we got a, a round full of kids going out. And if you got your offering, you can bring it up here during this time as well. Totally up to you guys. Um, so next, I believe, it is offering time. I'm looking around. Oh, there's my there's my body. Um, okay, so you'll want to make your checks out payable to Brass Valley Cowboy Church. There's a, a, a scan, a QR code on your bulletin. And that will lead you right up to our PayPal account. And then there will be credit and debit giving um, in the back, um, in the foyer after church. So I believe that's all I've got. All right. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? How many want to hear a word from God this morning? Well, I talked to Will and I told him I'd keep the tithe and the offering within 30 minutes. And he could have the rest of the time and everything. But uh, No, i tell you what. I... I uh, just want to welcome everybody here this morning, and uh, I want to say that it is an honor and a privilege to be able to stand up here and uh, to be able to, to uh, ask you for your money. How many <laughs> stand up here and ask you for your money and and to uh, and and to and to make you want to give? You know, man, that takes a that takes an act. But no, just to be able to share with what God has been able to bless me and my family, and he wants to bless every, everybody here this morning. I just want to encourage you that uh, today come expecting God to meet you where you are today. Will summed it all up a while ago. Everybody here is facing something I, every day. I don't care what it is. And, uh, my, and, uh, and I was just there just really kind of praying. The Lord says that if you seek me, you will find me. And the more you seek God, the more you're going to find him. And another verse says not to lean on our own understanding, but to trust God in everything that we do and our decisions that we make. Because sometimes when we make decisions, how many guys know that we can definitely make some wrong decisions when we're trusting our own selves? That's why we're in the mess we're in. That's why a lot of times we're going from one disaster to another disaster because we haven't sought what God wants. We'll go ask our friends and our neighbors. And guys, our boat's sinking too, just like ours, you know. And uh, and, it, and it's hard to realize when you're, you know, when your boat's sinking, you need to get a bigger bucket and keep bailing water out. Or need, or another one is is consider your ways and and decisions we've made. But uh, this morning, God woke me up with the word, and I just uh, I, I was not expecting this. Candy, you know what he said? Tell the people, give to me exactly what you would want me to give to you. Give to me exactly what you would want me to give to you. That's that's pretty strong, guys. And uh, I just, uh, this morning, I just, uh, uh, part of that, what Will was talking about, said, uh, I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently. In other words, with all of our heart, zeal, trusting, and link, that you will find me. You know, it goes, uh, I, I got this story that I heard the other day. This guy was really trusting and believing God, you know, and he was uh, lived over in California, not very far from the beach over there, and every morning at 7 o'clock he'd go out there and he'd just stand on the beach, walk up and down, praying, praying, praying. Finally, one morning God said, I, I've been hearing you, watching you, you've been very diligent in seeking me, and, and uh, I am going to ask you, you have a request, whatever you want, I will, I'll grant it to you. Well, you know, Lord, I'd, I'd love to go to Hawaii, but uh, man, right now with the pandemic and we can't fly and, and things are just the way they are, he said, I'd really like for you to build me a bridge from here on the beach all the way over to Hawaii. And uh, God said, well, that's a pretty big request. He said, you know, that's, we've got to have service station repair shops and all that along the way. He said, but if, if I could ask you for another request, what would be your other request? He said, well, God, I'm married. And I've got four daughters, and uh, I would just like to understand women. I mean, I, I do not understand women at all. God's, 
Yeah, and God went, mm hmm. Do you want that to be a two lane or a four lane? <laughs> See, God's got a sense of humor, you know. But uh, anyway, though, this morning, I just want to kind of share with you a little bit. You know, it talks about in uh, Proverbs, and we go to Malachi 3, and that's kind of the foundation. Bring all the tithe in the storehouse so what? So there'll be what? Plenty. Plenty. What does that mean? It means bring our tithes into where you're being fed. If you're being fed here, bring your tithe into here. If you're going to another church and you're being fed there, you give into that storehouse. And God says, see that I do not, Jason, open up the uh, gates of heaven and pour out such a blessing that you're, see, here's another deal, he's part cowboy, that your barns won't even be able to contain it. He didn't say your house or your, or your mobile home or your car or whatever, our barns would be full because most of us have big barns and, and it stores a lot of grain and a lot of feed and everything. And in Proverbs 3, 9, it says, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits, all of your crops, and that includes the finances, and the first fruits is just a biblical way of saying that we should give first before we do anything else with our money. And trust God in this and see that God says that I do not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out such a blessing. A lot of times we get to where it goes back to we lean in our own understanding that God, I just got all these bills, I got all of this. Well, see, and God says see this, and we can tell you, my wife and I, and a lot of us that are tithers firsthand, that giving you cannot outgive God. Some way or another, yeah. the more you give, the more God bless. And it's not like, okay, God, let's see, I gave uh, this amount today, so I'm expecting a tenfold or a hundredfold and everything. you got to meet it. Well, where is my heart at? My heart is to be able to give to God because he's given to me, not to get anything back. And God is in the blessing business. Everybody say, God, God. is in the blessing business. Yeah. And he wants to bless me. We sometimes restrict that. So uh, give and it be given back to you. A good measure pressed down. And uh, that another thing, he says he will rebuke the devourer for our sake. In other words, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes because a lot of times when we're stepping out in this faith of trying to trust God, how many guys know the enemy's going to be right there to try to take at you and say, see, I knew it wouldn't work. I, I knew it wouldn't work, but God says he's going to rebuke the devourer for our sake this morning. So as we get ready to make our tithes and offerings, just go before the Lord and ask him, Lord, what do you want me to give today? What is my need today? I've given to you so you give back to me, not begrudgingly or that I've got to, but because we want to. We want to bless the Lord today with our tithes. We want to bless the Lord today in our presence. We want to bless the Lord today with our hearts and open our hearts up. And God, in return, is going to pour out a blessing for you. Amen? Amen. Every day he's in the blessing business. His mercy is renewed, what did it say, every morning. So we start all over. It's a clean slate. So this morning I ask you to stand, and we're going to do uh, just our proclamation up there. And uh, because I'll guarantee you, somebody's already found some money the other day. They were somewhere. They found some money. Um, I haven't ever found that much. I found a couple of pennies and dimes, and I literally said, "Even penny, Lord, you said an increase. Well, pennies an increase." So if we're faithful with little, He's going to give us much. Amen. 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 All right. Let's go, guys. Thank you, Lord, for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales, and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, accounts and dividends, gifts and surprises, finding money we can keep, debt cancellation, bills decreased, bills paid off, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs and all of our church's financial needs so that we will have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ forever and ever and ever. Father, we just thank you this morning. Bless the givers, Father God. Let every dollar that's raised, every penny that's raised here today, Father God, further your kingdom. And, Father, that we will be a witness both in the city and in the country, Father, in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Amen.
party, don't turn around off just yet. Y'all hang out just for just a second. All right. Y'all y'all don't run off just 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 yet. Yeah, amen. Come on, let's give that praise and worship team a round of applause. Amen. I right, here's what I want you to do before y'all take off off the stage. Um, I want you to take your steel and I want y'all to keep playing what you just played. All right, but here's the thing: about a little bit into it, I want you to take your hand and I want you to take one of your uh, keys over there and I want you to turn it and uh, let's let this steel go out of tune and I want you to keep playing out of tune for a minute. Well, I play out of tune. <laughs> okay, Brian. All right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pass it. That is true. You can just kind of. All right, let's move over to the bass player. All right, Brian. About a little ways in there, you gotta play loud though so we can hear really hear the bass. All right. I want you to take it out of tune. And, and we want to hear it out of tune, all right? And I know I, I know Ace over here, she can't do that. And you don't have a drum key with you, it's going to be kind of hard to do that with the drums. All right. We're going to have, all right, all right, go ahead. Let's play, play it again. Play a little bit out of tune too, Marty. Let's see if both of y'all can play live. different when they're out of tune. Amen. And it, 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 do you think it sounds better when it's in tune? And the song is, it, it, there, there's a reason we we have to be in tune so everybody's together, amen, and play it together. And it sounds right. So it will be right. Amen. I mean, God wants us to be in tune. And, and, and this morning I want to talk about, uh, about Getting in tune so we can move forward. God wants to do some tuning in our lives. Can I get an amen? And there's areas in our each and every one of our lives, and, and if you if you stand here today and say that there's not, then then there definitely is an area that needs to be tuned in your life. Amen. Because nobody's perfect. The Bible says all have sinned, all have fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. We've all got areas that we need to work on. And even if you're all right in some areas, there's always room for fine-tuning. I know on, on my fiddle, on a, you have, on the, on the very end, you have the main tuning, and you tune, and then I have what's called fine-tuning up, up by the bridge. And what happens is you get, get it close with, with up here, and then down here you get it, you fine-tune it. And then it, gets real, it sounds really good. Amen. And so sometimes we can be get tuned in kind of roughly, but it still isn't fine-tuning. God wants to take us to a place of being fine-tuned so that we can sound really, really sweet. Can I get an amen? So that we sound really good. God wants to do some tuning in your life. Look at your neighbor and say, God wants to do some tuning in your life. Now, do you know what that is in your neighbor's life? A lot. A lot. Now, now, don't tell them. All right, it's all right. You may be married to that other person, and and, and don't 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 start naming things. Okay, let God deal with them. Amen. See, let God God can deal with them better than you can. Can I get an amen? amen? You just pray. Say, Lord, and some of you need to be praying stronger than others. Amen. Some of you need to be spending more time in your prayer closet than other people. Amen. Because of who you're married to. Now, nobody nobody be pointing any fingers now. Maybe you need to be praying for yourself. Come on. Lord, help me. Come on. That's what we need to be doing like David did. David was always praying for himself, asking God to show me my heart, God, so that, I, Lord, that I can correct, correct myself. Can I get an amen? See, when we're, 
But, but there's people here that, yeah, there's those that haven't come to that enlightenment yet, and you're praying for them. Lord, pray. Lord, I pray that they'll come to their senses, Lord, so that they'll start asking you, Lord, to show me my ways. Amen? Be praying for other people. Man. Also be praying, Lord, let them come to the re realization like David to desire to be right with you. You know, when we come to a place where God wants to use us in a mighty way and we know we want to be used by God and you come to a place where you're intimate with God, you are like David and you desire to be right with God because you want to have a sweet, sweet sounding music of your life. Amen. You want your life to be like a sweet song, not like a train wreck. Come on. Who wants a train wreck for a life? No. We don't want to, I mean, but if you want a life that is smooth and want God to do a mighty work in your life, we need to accept and receive whatever tuning God wants to do in us. Can I get an amen? amen. And if you're too proud or don't want God to be telling, uh, bringing discipline, now, now this I'm, I'm going to talk about tuning is discipline, too. Right. Anybody ever, ever, ever uh, if you had horses, sometimes if you've been off a horse a while and you hadn't been on him, they need some fine tuning. They may know their job. They may, you may know, they may need, uh, spit it out. Well, they, <laughs> they know what they're supposed to be doing, but if they haven't done it for a while, they need some tuning on. Sometimes that requires a little bit of discipline when you're dealing with horses. Can I get an Amen. And they have to, sometimes you got to wake them up because they, they, they kind of forgot and got a little bit lazy. Amen. If you have your Bible, turn with me to, uh, we're going to go over to uh, Hebrews chapter 12. Let me put my glasses on. Hebrews chapter 12. And we're going to start at verse 5. And uh, it says, And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as our two sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. Now, chastening there means discipline. It says, Nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten or discipline? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Listen to me. God wants to bring discipline into our lives because he loves us. If you love your children, how many know you want to, you need to discipline them? Or they're just going to run wild and do whatever they want. And how many know that a child that does whatever they want, an unruly child, is not going to accomplish very much. They're going to be a problem. A problem child. Can I get an Amen. Do you know any problem, child? So don't point any fingers at you. Listen to me. <laughs> There's a lot of comments going on. But God doesn't want us to be a problem, child. He wants us to succeed and be everything that we, he has created us to be. He, he has predestined us. He's put a vision and a mission for each and every one of our lives. And he wants us to achieve everything that he has put in front of us, he wants us to achieve all, amen, all the great and awesome things that he has for our lives, church, but it requires us to do what he's called us to do. It requires us to be tuned on a little bit when we're out of tune, and, 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 and it, it depends on us to, to accept chastening or discipline in our lives. And we are pliable, so we say, God, whatever you want to do in my life, I give my life to you. If there's areas that need to be fixed, areas that need to be tuned on or put in tune, Lord, I welcome it in Jesus' name. And then we have that heart and that attitude uh, of receiving whatever God has. And it may be some correction, and not, every, nobody, not everybody likes correction. 
And sometimes when you want to bring in correction into people's lives, they get mad. Why is that? How dare you tell me what to do? Correction is not always fun. I know one time my mama told me, my mama, when I was little, I don't know how old I was, it was probably like, my mama said I was a strong-willed child. I got lots of spankings. <laughs> Can y'all believe that? I got lots of spankings. And I'm not saying I didn't deserve them because I remember the spankings and I remember why I got spankings. But my mom and dad would try, they, they would, we would drive down the road and my mama kept a switch on the front dash of the pickup truck all the time. Because you never knew when I needed it. Because I needed it a lot. And I praise God for that chastening. Amen. I praise God for that discipline because I wouldn't be the person I am today if I hadn't been disciplined. And, and one time we were in church, and I was probably about, I don't know, seven, I guess, I'm guessing. And I was being kind of challenging for my mama. And she took me out of church five times one Sunday morning. And, she's, and, and we went to the woods. We had some woods beside the church. And she knew how to strip and get a switch. And we went to the woods five times, and she said on the last time we went out the door, a lady leaned over and said, honey, just keep, keep, keep it up. You're doing good. You're doing good. She needed some encouragement because this instrument was hard to tune. Amen? He was tough, but eventually he got tuned on. Amen? And we all need tuning on, and we all need to receive the tuning. And we need to realize that we need tuning in our lives so that we can be the best that God wants us to be. Because like, just like a horse, if, you, if, he, if he's not tuned on from time to time, he gets like that instrument, and, he, and he's not where he needs to be, and he's not the best that he can be. Because he might get lazy in an area, he might, he might forget in an area, but sometimes we need to bring to a remembrance, amen, and it might be through some, some discipline that it takes to bring that to remembrance to our lives so that we can get right and we can be the best that we can be. Amen. All right. Let's move on. It says, uh, verse 8. But if you are without chastening or discipline, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? How many know we need correction in our lives to live? For they indeed for a few days chasted us as seemed best to them. But he but he for our profit. See God disciplines us for our profit. For our good. Everybody say for my good. Shall we, not, shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they, this is verse 10, for they indeed for a few days chastened us and seemed best to them, but he for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now no one chastens, no, now no chastening or discipline seems to be joyful for the present. Nobody likes it when you're going through it, when it's happening, right? But painful, nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained, trained, let me say it again, trained by it. See, what God's doing when he brings discipline into our lives, he's training us. He's training us. And just like the Bible says, train up a child in the way they should go when they're young and when they're old, they won't depart. Amen? It brings training into our lives. So see, David sought correction. He wanted God's correction in his life. He prayed for correction. Lord, show me my heart. Show me my life. 
And he would ask God, Lord, uh, Lord, l let there be nothing that separates me from you. Lord, let there not let nothing uh, come between us, God, and my relationship with you. Because he knew how precious that relationship was. And for us to fulfill all righteousness and all that God wants for our lives, we need to stay close to God, and we, need, we have to be doing what God wants us to do. Can I get an amen? Amen. Say it again. Amen. amen. Do we have any mechanics? Uh, any mechanics out there? How many know on race day, your, your, your motor better be in tune? Amen. How many know you're not going to win a race if your motor's out of tune? I don't care what way. If, it's a, if it needs a tuning, it's not time to get on the get on the on, on the start on, on the racetrack can I get an amen but what do we do before we go to the racetrack we got to get that thing completely totally in tune and it's completely tuned in and right before we even think about competing with somebody else amen and so what we need to desire like David is Lord show me my heart show me my life so that I can be in tune so I can I can run the race that you have set before me and I'm going to finish that race Amen. And I'm not just going to finish, but I'm going to finish it with, with, with victory. Amen. And I don't care if we all compete and all run and we are all in tune. Guess what? You're going to finish with victory. Because we're all running a race, each and every one of us. The race that God has set before us, a race towards heaven, a race towards all that God has planned for our lives, church. And we need to run in a way. Amen. And we need to cast off, the Bible says, all the sin that so easily entangles us. And that's what, what's happening when we're getting in tune. We're casting off that sin. We're casting off those things that are carnal, amen, and those things that are holding us back are holding us up from where God wants us to be. And it's time for us to come to the mindset of, you know what? What I'm doing is not good for me. I don't care how good it is, it seems right now, but you know in your knower, and God has put it in your heart, what's good for you and what's not good for you. And it's time for us to come to a place, and, and, and we go around that mountain over and over again. We find ourselves falling, and we find ourselves getting beat up and scraped up, and God's wondering, saying, when are you going to get it? How? I've got so much more. i got so much more for you, and, and you keep going through the same mess, and you, and, and, and yeah, you, why do we keep putting ourselves in the same mess when God's got so much more and better for us? You hear me today? Quit. Ah, come on. Come on, get the switch. Amen. Switch. Yeah. Uh, it's time for us to switch ourselves. When are we going to grow up? Uh -oh. Hello? Yeah, we can be all holy in church on Sunday morning, but what are you doing during the week when you're at work? When, do we, when, when does God say, when are you going to get it? When do you want the best for your life? What, 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 what's, going, what's it going to take for us to come to a place to say, you know what? God said, I want what's best for your life. Pastor Will's up here preaching what God wants. He wants the best for your life. When are you going to realize that you want God's best for your life? What's it going to take? Your family falling apart? What's it going to take? Losing a job? What's it going to take? What's it going to take for God to wake you up and say, you know what? What I do is not working. What's it going to take? When are you going to realize that your engine is out of time? When, when's it going to real, when are you going to realize that your instrument is out of tune and the music you're playing is not too pretty? The sad thing is some people are so used to hearing out of tune music. <laughs> They don't know the difference. 
You know what the Bible says? It says that you keep on sinning, doing the same thing over and over again. You know, at first, there's conviction in your, your heart like, ah, shouldn't be doing that. Lord, forgive me. You do it again, ah, Lord, forgive me. Do it again, same thing again a little bit later. Ah, and then all of a sudden, what happens? You do it again, and you don't have that, ah. You're just, ah. Do it again, and it's no big deal. And the next thing you know, you do it again, you don't have nothing telling you it's no big deal. And then it's like, okay, I'll just do it. God must be okay with it. No, he got tired of talking to you about it. And he says, all right, you want to do what you want to do, go ahead and do it. And you're not going to listen to me anyway. Why should I talk to you? And then we find our, ourselves face down in the ditch, rock bottom, amen, sleeping with the pigs, just like the prodigal son. And sometimes that's what it takes. It takes people to hit rock bottom before they lift their eyes up towards heaven and say, what am I doing? God wants so much more for me. God wants so much more for my life. Amen. God wants to, church, he wants you to prosper, but we can't keep living in known sin and expect God to bless us. Come on. If you know what you're doing is sin, quit doing it. Because the Bible says that sin separates you from God. It separates you from God. And God says, all right, get right, repent, and turn. It doesn't mean do a, 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 306, a, a, one, a, a 360. A 360 is where you keep going, and you turn all the way around, and then you keep on going. He says, don't do a 180. You turn, and you go away from it, and then go the opposite direction. Come on. God is, wants us to receive the tuning that we need in our lives so that we can move forward with what he wants to do with our lives. Amen? Amen. All right. Are y'all are y'all are y'all getting this this morning? All right. There was another guy in the Bible. His name was Naaman. He was a pretty cool dude. Uh, so over in 2 Kings chapter 5, you can read about him. And let's go ahead and read about him right now. And verses 1 through 4, it says, Now Naaman, 2 Kings 5, 1 through what? 4. Are y'all listening this morning? For those that are taking notes. Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier but he had leprosy. Now bands from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, if only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his, of his leprosy. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. So Naaman went with his horses and his chariots. And let's jump up. We're going to go jump to verse 9 here. Everybody go to verse 9. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots. And stopped at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. 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 <laughs> but Naaman went away angry. Listen to me. Here he did. He came all this way to see the prophet. And the prophet told him what to do. And it says, but Naaman went away angry and said, I thought, here's, what he, he, here's his way of thinking. He said, I thought. Everybody say, I thought. I thought. Say that one more time. Say, I thought. How many know sometimes our thinking gets ourselves in trouble? <laughs> Amen. Our, everybody say, my thinking gets myself in trouble. I thought that he would surely come out to me 
So he got this preconceived idea of what was going to happen. He said, I thought that he would sure, talking about the prophet, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over me, over the spot, and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, much better than the waters of Israel? Here's, here he is, my thinking. He's got a better way. He thinks he knows it. But guess what? His way got him in the shape that he was in. His way of thinking got him in the place that he was in. And that was not a good place. He said, Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Naaman's servants, verse 13, Naaman's servants went to him and said, My father... Now, here's some folks that are talking a little sense into him. Amen? They're talking some sense into him here. I said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times as the man of God had told him, and his flesh was restored and became, became clean like that of a young boy. Now, in the time, what we've got to come to the place is, see, Naaman wanted, God, well, he wanted to be clean, but he wanted him to do it his way. And it took somebody coming to him and talking some sense into him and said, hey, God, your way's not the best. Just be obedient to God. Know that God wants the best for you, no matter how crazy it sounds. God's got the best for you, and it's time for us to, to, to lay down our wants, to, to, to lay down our thoughts in the way we think it ought to go, and say, God, I am going to do what you want me to do, not just do it, but how you want me to do it. Amen? And you know what? God is faithful. Sometimes we, 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 we run off angry. We find ourselves just like Naaman. We have pride. How many know that, that, that was, he was angry because he thought, oh, I, here I am, the captain of, of the army here. I'm coming in here with chariots and all this army and all this entourage. And then he don't, the prophet don't even show up at the door. He sends one of his servants to go tell him what to do. I mean, am I not good enough for the, the prophet himself to show up? Hmm. You remember the centurion that had this sick child? And he went to Jesus. And Jesus was going to go to his house. And he said, no, just give me the word. For I am a man under authority, and I know authority, and, I, and you just give me the word and I'll go. When are we going to come to the place of receiving what God wants for us, however he wants to do it? When are we going to come to the place of where we've got preconceived ideas, we've done church this way all these years, and we're going to keep doing church this way? I mean... I mean, it, it took a pandemic for us to start having church in the parking lot for us to change the things up. You know, sometimes God wants to bring us shaking to the church because we've been doing things the same way week after 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 year after year after year after year and we've done things the same way and oh we don't want to change and we don't want a fresh move of God because this is how we've been doing it all these years and bless God we're not going to change things we're going to keep singing singing those old songs that we've been singing in that same hymn book for a hundred years and we're not going to sing anything new do we want a move of God in our lives? If you want a fresh move of God in your life, guess what? There's fresh stuff coming out of heaven. God's got a new song that he wants to 
sing in your life. He wants to bring a new song. He wants to bring a freshness. Oh, yeah, the old ones are good. We need to remember those. And, and, and it's okay to sing. And it's okay to, to look back at where God's brought us from. But I want you to know today, God wants to take us somewhere. And he can't take us somewhere. He doesn't want to take us where we came from. He wants to take us to a new place, a new level. He wants to take us to a higher level. He wants to bring us from glory to glory, not from glory to yesterday, not from glory to last year, not from glory to, to 10 years ago or back whenever the great revival was. No, he wants to bring in a fresh and new revival in our lives, something new and awesome, and he wants to bring new life in our lives. And when are we going to receive it? When are, we, when are we going to say, okay, God, you're doing things different. I'm going to do it your way. Doesn't matter how, how crazy Pastor Will sounds. I'm a man of faith, and I, and, and I, and I do a lot of things in a crazy way because I expect God to move. The Bible says it. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And I, God gives me a vision, and I, I, I don't get there's. <laughs> it may get me in trouble, but when you're doing things God ways, it won't get you. It'll pan out in the end. It don't look good in the middle of it. I promise you. <laughs> it. Look, let me say it again. It don't look good in the middle of it. When you're in the middle of a a roping boxer in front of a roping boxer in the middle of a, uh, and, and you're fine tuning on a horse in the middle of a rope and guess what sometimes it don't look good but the fact is you're going to get back in that box and that horse is going to do what he's supposed to do and you're going to make the best run of the, uh, of the rodeo and you're going to win but sometimes it takes some tuning sometimes it, it, we, we, we go, God takes us in a direction that it, it may look crazy and it may look weird it may look like Naaman saying I don't understand this. I don't understand why we're, we got to do it this way. I don't understand why God's telling us to do it this way. But I want you to know something. Sometimes God said, hey, just listen. And watch what happens in the end. Because faith is calling those things that aren't as though they are. It, it, you don't see it at the time. That's why it's faith. If you saw it at the time you were going through it, guess what? It's not faith. So God's telling us to take a step of faith and believe and watch. In the end, he's going to bring that cleansing that needs to be done. And just like Naaman, that leprosy is going to fall off and your skin and your life is going to be where God wants you to be. And I want you to know today that's a good place. That's the best place. Everybody say the best place. Look at your neighbor and say, God wants the best in your life. Amen. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm shutting this down now. Here's some things that we need to do to allow God to do some tuning in our lives so we can move forward. First things we need to become open to God, just like David. Lord, whatever you want. Come to that place. Be open to God. God, whatever you want to do. Lord, show me my heart so I can repent. Show me where I, I'm messing up, Lord, so that I can get right. Show me, God, and, and, and have that heart of repentance. 1 Corinthians 1, 23 through 25 says, But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But those... But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, for the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom, and the weaknesses of God is stronger than man's strength. It may look foolish the way God wants us to do it, but if we're hearing from God, be obedient to his voice and it will come out, it will pan out in the end. Amen? Become open to God. God, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Then we need to inquire of God. Number two, we need to inquire of God. We need to seek God for direction. 
And then here's the deal. Once we seek God for direction and he gives you that direction, be willing to take that step of faith and do what he says to do. Amen? Number three, change to God's ways. It's often different than how we had things worked out in our minds. It may not even appear to be very significant. It don't have to be some great big thing. It can be something small. And God is just waiting for us to be obedient in that small thing. Amen? See, the Bible says if we were faithful in the little things, in the little things, if we're faithful, it starts out in the little things. God's not asking you to... To change the whole world overnight. Amen. He's just asking for you to start working on yourself first. Start pulling out the switch. Not for somebody else. It may not be so, seem significant. Be faithful in the little things. And then it says God will make you rule over much. Y'all hear me? And here's some, something else. Change to some good advice. Just like that, those servants of Naaman went to him and said, Hey, 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 don't get mad. If, 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 they were, if he was asking to do something great, wouldn't you have done it? I'm not talking about taking any, any old advice. I say good advice. Amen? Run it past God. Somebody tells you something, don't just receive it and just say, Okay, let me run it, let me run it past the Bible. Make sure it doesn't conflict with God's word. Amen. Make sure it speaks to me right here. Hello. It may not speak to you here, but it's going to speak to you here. It's going to be confirmation of what God's already spoken in your heart. And that confirmation comes in. You say, you know what? God's been speaking to me about that. He's put that on my heart. And I know that's what I'm supposed to do. And then the last one is we need to change some areas in our thought life. We need to change our way of thinking. We need to start right here with fine-tuning our thinking. Amen? We need to start rethinking to align with the scriptures of what God's Word says. It doesn't have to make sense with man's logic. All it needs to do is we need to make sure it aligns with Scripture. Romans 12, 2. And I'll end with this one. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Let me say that again. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person this is by changing the way you think. You hear me? It says, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Amen? One more scripture. Proverbs 12, 18. Proverbs 12, 18. Reckless words pierce like a sword. But the tongue of the wise brings healing. Listen to me. It's time to lay down the pride. And start thinking, you know what? My way may not be the way. It may not be God's way. Some of us need to go back to the prayer closet. And start seeking God. Lord, I'm going to start trusting you more. I know it doesn't make sense, but I'm going to trust you, and I know you're going to work it all out. I don't have to understand it. All I've got to do is be obedient. Amen? Lord, show me my heart. Lord, do whatever you need to do in my life to get me right. Whatever discipline, you need to take me out of church five times to the woods. Lord, here I am. 
I may go out kicking and screaming, but I know in the end that correction is what I need. How many are going to come to the place where we are going to desire correction, God's, God's correction? We need to desire His correction, you guys, because we know that what He wants to do in our lives is good. Everything He wants to do in our life is, is good. All things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to His purposes. Amen? Y'all stand to your feet with me today. Bow your heads. Hallelujah. Before we dismiss, I want to give you the opportunity today to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Jesus said in John chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus is the only way to heaven. Jesus is the only way to become a child of God. And when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you become a child of God. And everything I'm talking about right now, today, applies to you. You want a home in heaven? Receive Jesus. You want God to be your father? Receive Jesus. You want to be a child of God? Receive Jesus. He's the only way. And you can be that today. And if that's you today, you say, Pastor, I, I need Jesus in my life. Or maybe when you were young. I'm not telling you to you gotta get saved all over all over again, but all you've got to do is repent. Say, God, I'm sorry. And that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna for those that need Jesus, we're gonna receive him. For those that need to repent and get your life turned back around, I want you to do that with me right now. We're gonna pray, and I want you to repeat after me and mean this prayer in your heart. Amen. So let's I want everybody here to pray this prayer to help somebody that may need some encouragement today. Say this way, say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Right now today, I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I believe by faith he died on the cross for my sin. He was buried in a tomb. But on the third day, he arose again and is alive. Thank you, Jesus, for me, my Lord and my Savior. I receive you right now. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Listen to me. If you prayed that prayer for the first time and you meant it, or if you, if you say, God, I'm rededicating my life to you. I've, I've been far from you. But I'm ready to get things right. I'm ready to start living for you again. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. And Lord, I'm making a commitment today that I'm going to I'm going to turn toward you and walk the life that you called me to walk. If that's you today, I want nobody looking around. I'm not going to call you up and call you up. Just lift your hand up. Say, Pastor, that's me. Anybody? If you're watching online, it doesn't matter if you're here or there. If you've prayed that prayer and you meant it in your heart, it's just as strong where you're watching it today as it is right here in this room. Say, Jesus, I receive you. I receive you, Lord, as my Savior and my Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And you can know you're, you're a child of God. And you're headed in the right direction. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you, Lord, for every person here. And everyone, Lord God, that's hearing this message today. I pray, God, that as you bring that tuning into our lives, Lord God, that we will receive it and we'll want it. And we're going to be quickly changed into some beautiful, beautiful music. 
Lord, you want to use us in mighty, mighty ways. You want us to accomplish and do great things. But Lord, you said if we're faithful in the little things, you'll make us rule over much. And I thank you, Lord God, as we've been faithful, as we've continued to be faithful, in trusting you and walking in faith, Lord God, we know that you're going to come through and you're going to do great things in our lives. And we're going to see the world around us changed because of the call that you placed on us. In Jesus' name. Lord, we receive your tuning. We receive your discipline. Lord God, we receive it because we know it's going to bring correction and get us back on track where we need to be with you. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I pray for an awesome week this week. I pray that you would keep your angels around us, keep us safe. I pray, Lord, that no weapon formed against us will prosper in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that your very best is going to come forth in our lives. That we're going to see miracles in our lives come forth. Because we trust in you and we did things your way. In Jesus' my name we pray. And everyone who agrees said, Amen, amen, and amen. Listen to me. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. Amen. If you need prayer, oh, our prayer partners will be up here in the front, our prayer team. If you need prayer, come on up. We'll, they'll pray with you. Uh, we got several baptisms that we're doing real quick right after church. We're going to be doing those in the foyer. I hear if you got to go, we understand. Uh, that's fine. If, but if you would like to hang around and and support those that are getting baptized, we'd love for you to hang around. Amen? But if you got to go, you got to go. We love you. Y'all have a blessed week. Y'all invite somebody else with you next week. Amen? Bring somebody with you to church next Sunday. Say, hey, it's a good place to be. Come with me. Amen? Y'all be blessed. You're dismissed. God bless you.